I've been involved in file-based audio, streaming as you might call it, over the last 15 years or so. It all started when I saw my son play MP3s from his computer, and the phenomenon has fascinated me ever since. In this video I will tell you what I have learned about playing music from your hard disk at better than MP3 quality. I didn't like the MP3s my son used, so I gave him a proper stereo, including a Moran CD player with improved clock oscillator. He enjoyed the set but kept using his computer as source instead of the CD player. So I gave him a stack of recordable CDs, for I thought that money was the problem. But it wasn't. It was ease of use that drove him. It made me think about the future of audio and started investigating the possibilities. A noisy computer in the living room was no option and silent computers were scarce and expensive then. When Philips introduced a device that could play photos, videos and music from a computer over the network, the streaming SL400i, I ordered one. It was then that I learned that playing audio from a video enabled device might not lead to very good results. To cut a long story short, I travelled through file based audio country passing Squeezebox, Sonos, iTunes combined with Audiovana, Amara and Pure Music, Simple Audio, Blue Sound, Project, Raspberry Pi, Sonori, SOTM and many others. In this video I will attempt to give you an overview of the most popular ways of playing audio files from a storage medium. It's not an in-depth story and it doesn't pretend to cover all, but for those relatively new to file-based audio I hope it will give more insight in the matter. People that want more in-depth information might consider buying my book File-Based Audio aka Streaming Audio. You will find the link below this video in YouTube. Let's start with some general remarks. There are some remarks to be made on the searchability within streaming systems. The number of metadata fields that can be searched is often limited to artists, albums, genres and perhaps also the release date. The support of extended metadata was, and some, sometimes still is, limited. For instance, with classical music the composer field, a standard field in all file formats, might not be supported by the streamer or streaming server. This led to very poor metadata sets where instead of the performing artist the composer was entered. So instead of Arthur Rubinstein playing Chopin Nocturne, the metadata sometimes only named Frederick Chopin as the artist, while in other files Chopin and Rubinstein were both named as artists. The correct way is to enter Chopin in the composer field and Rubinstein in the artist field. Often the composer field can be searched using the general search field. This will usually be slower, but it's better than nothing. But if you are a fan of classical music, be sure to check whether searching on composers is facilitated. On the other end of the scale, not only the composer can be searched on, but for instance also the composition, like Scheherazade by Rinksy Kosakov. Then there are systems that don't support gapless playback. So if you play music that is continuous but is marked in track numbers for convenience, there will be a short silence between the tracks. For instance, with live music the applause is muted shortly. Even more irritating is when a continuous piece of music is concerned. For instance, Canto Ostinato by Simeon ten Holt, played by Kees Wieninga and Paula de Haas. A minimal music-like composition for two pianos of almost 75 minutes that, on CD, is divided in 106 tracks. Played on equipment that doesn't support gapless playback, gives you a short break in the music about every few minutes. The better streamers nowadays solve this in the hardware, but there are still are those that don't. The first system that came across after the Philips Streamium was the Slim Devices Slim 3. It sounded disastrous, but this was corrected in the successor, the Squeezebox. Several products followed and in 2006 Slim Devices was bought by Logitech. 
they introduced a squeeze box touch that supported 96 kHz. Many tweaks became available over time, better power supplies and even unofficial firmware tweaks for the touch that would activate the USB socket as an output to a USB DAC and later on an update to 192 kHz over USB. The system is managed from the server software, Logitech Media Server, LMS for short. It was initially operated from the squeeze box display using the infrared remote. The player sent the infrared instructions to the LMS that sends back the album or track information to the display. You then select music to play and again this request is sent to the LMS that responds by sending the music files to the player. The squeeze box itself is a DOM terminal passing on information and rendering music. Later on iOS and Android apps became available as remote. There also was a duet that had no display on the player but had a display on its remote control. Logitech stopped making squeeze boxes in 2010 but promises to maintain the support for the LMS. Today other parties use the LMS for their products. There are emulators for Raspberry Pi and for instance Sonori and SOTM offer a squeeze box emulation in their streamers. Later on iOS and Android apps became available as remote. There are also many plugins for LMS to expand the possibilities, including for streaming services like Tidal. Be wise though and install only those plugins that you really need to prevent instability of LMS. Many players use the DNLA protocol. It needs DNLA server software running on a computer or NAS. DNLA was initiated in June 2003 by the large consumer electronics companies. It was designed to facilitate streaming video, audio and photos from your computer, but it was obvious that the audio part had little or no priority. The system worked fine when indexing a few hundred files, but became notoriously slow when thousands of files had to be indexed and searched. Most people won't have more than a few dozen videos, but for audio and photos nowadays things are different. If you own 100 CDs that will be around 1300 tracks. Clever hardware solutions and better server software have mostly solved this problem, at least in the better products. Furthermore DNA does not support gapless playback. The better manufacturers have also solved this in their playback devices while modern DNA servers do support most or all metadata fields. But there are still products out there that don't. Even within the same brand one model might while the other won't. So be sure to check. There are also manufacturers that use DNA as a base and build their own extensions on it, like Denon Hios, Lin and Yamaha MusicCast. DNA is based on the universal plug and play standard and companies that didn't want or weren't allowed to join the DNA consortium developed a comparable system and named it UPMP AV. In practice you will find no difference between UPMP AV and DNA and you can mix both systems without any problem. There are many DNA controller apps for smartphones and tablets as there is a lot of DNA server software. Sometimes as pure DNA server, but there is also player software that doubles as a DNA server. Even hardware players like those by Sonos offer their music to other players through the DNA protocol. Systems like Sonos and Bluesound and software like Volumio for the Raspberry Pi use their own local indexing system. Just point it to the shared volume on your home network and it will be indexed after which you can pick and play your music. Bluesound and Volumio like programs can even work without the shared volume. As soon as you have your music on a hard disk connected to the player and you're done. Some players even have the hard disk built in and also hold an optical drive to rip the CDs to the hard disk. Self-indexing systems are rather responsive since they contain the index locally and when more devices are added the indexes will automatically be copied through those two. There is a limitation too caused by the amount of memory in the player and the efficiency of the database engine. 
This limitation only gets in the way if you have real big music collection. The Blue OS used in Blue Sound also is used in NAD products. They are not the only self-indexing systems. Upmarket products like Zulus do their own indexing and have no need for a computer. Self-indexing players are the easiest to install and maintain and are highly recommended for the computer illiterate. There is a broad offer from the relatively low sound quality of the Sonos to the true high-end Zulus. On the other end of the spectrum we have the computer literate that used the computer for playback. They were there even before the squeeze box but it took some time before decent audio quality was possible. The simplest way is to use the analog output on the computer but as often with simple solution it results in poor audio quality since the sound card inside the computer suffers from poor clocking, polluted power supply and interference from other clock signals. Using an outboard sound card, a digital to analog converter, abbreviated to DAC, does offer better sound for it suffers less from the aforementioned problems. But they are not entirely gone. Some use an audiophile power supply to further improve the sound quality while others use interface boxes that clean up the power lines and reclocks the USB or SPDIF signal. Depending on the quality of that box the result can be somewhere between hardly better to shockingly good but shockingly good will easily set you back grand or more. And then there is the operating system that by default will change the audio signal. For quality sound you don't want that. This can easily be solved but it depends on the OS what is needed. Windows computers will need a special driver, a special mode to be enabled and a bit perfect software. On a Mac and Linux computer just a bit perfect software will do. Some software will allow you to use network audio adapters, which I will discuss in the following chapter, like J River Media Center that can play music to DLA renderers. The network audio adapter, NAA for short, is essentially a digital output that is connected to the computer over the network. When you use a tablet or smartphone to control a Raspberry Pi that emulates a squeeze box, the Raspberry Pi is essentially an NAA. The same goes for a DLA renderer or Rune endpoint, on which later more. The essence is that the noisy computer can remain elsewhere while the NAA will be placed in the living room. Since the NAA is a very simple computer, purposely built for audio, it will be more optimal and thus provide the DAC with a cleaner signal than a regular computer. Also here price and performance vary greatly and the most expensive will not automatically be the better one. But the better one will be more expensive for it takes a lot of design time and expensive components to achieve this. Many audio specific streaming systems are brand specific too. Sonos only supports Sonos hardware, Blue OS only supports Blue Sound and NAD and so on. This doesn't apply to DNLA and also Rune is brand agnostic. The latter is a de development by the people that started Zulus and left some years after Meridian had taken over the company. The difference between DLA and Rune is immense in speed, presentation, metadata and price. The Rune server is run on a computer running Windows, macOS or Linux and has at least an Intel i3 processor and an SSD system disk. A special version is available for the Intel NUC if you are willing to dedicate that computer fully to Rune. I have several videos on Rune if you want to have more details. See the link in the comments in YouTube. You control Rune with a smartphone, tablet or computer and you can output to the computer output a DAC connected to the computer, DACs that are Rune ready, streamers that are Rune ready, NAAs running Rune ready software and Raspberry Pis running Rune ready software. You can also send music to other computers, smartphones and tablets running Rune software, squeeze boxes, Sonos equipment and airport stations. 
So like with many other systems you can store your music centrally and play it on many places in the house. Like with DNLA you can use it for ultra high end audio in the listening room, top quality hi fi in the living, use a blue sound player in the study, a Sonos player in the kitchen and a Raspberry Pi with sound card connected to that old ghetto blaster in the garage. Your son and daughter can play from the same pool of music, including title, over their computer or smartphone and each and every one can have their own profile, playlists and so on. It is hard to say what system suits you best. I have reviewed a large number of solutions. See the playlist on the streaming audio players, network audio adapters and network audio players. See the link below this video in YouTube or Patreon or at the end of this video. And subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the comments below this video in YouTube for the links. If you like this video, Please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on thehbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. Mm -hmm.